days may be darkest, but your light is greater. You light our way, God, you light our way. When evil is rising, you're rising higher with power to save, power to save. Because you keep hope alive, you keep hope alive from beginning to end. Your word never fails, and you keep hope alive because you are alive, Jesus. You are alive, and death had a strong. Finds its inmost melody. Every 
serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Consider how the wildflowers grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet, I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs after such things, and your Father knows that you have need of them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock. For your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourself that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near or no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Welcome. I am so glad that you've joined us today. I have been captivated by um, a statement of Jesus all week long, and I I'd like us to think about it together today. Jesus said this, consider the flowers of the field. They neither toil nor labor. Consider that, consider the flowers. Um, I don't know about you, but there are times that it's really hard to believe the teachings of Jesus. Like, it's, I like to believe that someday um, I'm gonna go and live in heaven eternally with Jesus because he was God came to earth and died for me and because I've decided to believe in his atoning sacrifice that I get to spend eternity with him. But Jesus doesn't just talk about those like far away things. He talks about like life on earth with people, with money, with uh, with with government. He, he talks about how to live and sometimes I don't get what Jesus talks about. 
How would you and I as people deal with worry? Because that's what Jesus says to those who would follow him, don't worry. Well, by the way, happy Mother's Day. Moms, thank you so much for joining us. And I in no way want to imply with this sermon on Mother's Day that moms are just wrecked by worry. I don't, I don't, I don't want to imply that in any way, but I do know this. I know that everybody, moms, dads, grandparents, um, single people, um, young people, older people, retired people, just trying to find a job, people, unemployed people, Right now, our world is plagued by worry. Worry is something that is every day for us. Uh, COVID-19 isn't the beginning of worry. Worry has been around for a long time. And in the context of, of a famine and people being hungry, in the context of, of people being peasants, having little money and working just enough to get by day to day, Jesus speaks to that culture and says, those who follow after me will live a life that is not defined by worry itself. We've had a question that has been ultimately guiding us through this Life Resurrected series, and, and it's this question. In shutdown 2020, in this exile, this time where God has moved us out of our normal culture into something different, the question has been, what is God wanting to speak to us, to whisper into our lives? This week, I think he's saying, consider the flowers. They neither labor or toil. Um, Jesus makes um, kind of this definition in life. There are some things that we, we need. We need clothing, we need food, and we need some resources. He says, but we're not to be consumed with those things. Consider the flowers. They don't do anything. They abide and experience the, the grace and provision of God. They are more lavish than a king's court. They have every nutrient they need. They look beautiful, but don't be like the pagans who run after food and money and clothing. Um, Jesus isn't making some kind of ethnic slur in this statement, don't be like that people group. What he's saying is, don't be defined by the running to or after things, or don't be defined by running from things. Uh, I think this is the truth of Jesus' statement. In a world where we will worship something, we will either be defined by our abiding and trust in God or defined by what we pursue, what we put value on. And as Tim Keller said, and we quoted it early in this series, idols, false gods, counterfeit gods are things that are often good in our life, but we put too much value on them. And so we run to them to bring us some form of contentment or pleasure or relief or, or provision, but they aren't really God. And, and Jesus says in our life, we often find ourselves running to these things. They're the next great best thing. And if I do them, my life will be full or I'm running from something. So I, I, I'm, I'm trying to get away from how I used to be defined. And Jesus says, that's not how we're to exist at all. We're supposed to live in relationship to God, to seek first the kingdom and not be defined by what we have. So hard to believe, isn't it? Jesus says, don't worry. Don't be consumed by what we don't have at the moment. Pagans run after these things. What if shut down 2020 is God's way of helping us begin to redefine what should be central and of most value in our life? Um, for several years, I've been observing our church, our community, and our culture and I've been deeply grieved and concerned as I've watched us um, grow in, in levels of anxiety and uh, levels of depression and levels of frustration. Um, I've watched old and young alike be consumed by panic and, and worry. And, um, and anxiety is probably a, a definition of our emotional state. I don't think that's ever what God want us, wanted us to be like. 
yet we gather on Sunday mornings and we worship with eternal realities in mind that someday um, after I die up in the sky, I'll go to a, a godly Disneyland and it'll be fun and, and I'll enjoy it. But I think Jesus has always been saying, I want you to experience, I want you to exhibit life full in the present here and now. Instead of running from things and to things, I want you to simply abide in me. Uh, I think we've been uh, uh, defined by being exhausted and overloaded and toiling and straining, running for money and materials and experiences and you name it, the like. And I think what God is saying to us is that it's, it's time to define what's really important. A year ago, uh, almost a year ago to today, uh, my family and I made a choice. Um, I had been longing for a new vehicle for a long while. I had for, uh, for many years been um, idealizing and thinking about obtaining a vehicle that would bring me some form of satisfaction, maybe bring me contentment that my 15 year old um, beater car couldn't. And so we thought about it, we talked about it, we planned for it, we decided that, that we could go for it. Uh, we looked at the monthly payment, we recognized that that would fit within our limits. But the thing that I, we often do is we don't consider, here's our limit, and everything I choose often goes beyond what we plan for. And so what we learned is we didn't give enough margin in our life, that um, the payment was here, but there were other costs. There were fuel costs, and there were time costs, and there were other things. And, Within a few months of purchasing the vehicle, we began to recognize a level of anxiety and stress and a recognition that we had overloaded our budget with one item. Um, it, it wasn't a good decision that we went, had made. In retrospect, we didn't take everything into consideration in how to create margin in our life. Um, Here's how margin is defined. Margin is defined as the space between your load and your limit. This is my limit. We have this much money. We have this much time. So my load should fall beneath my limit. That, that will keep margin in my life, this space between the, the load and limit. And it's protection, it's security, it's, it's peace of mind. But when we allow our, our limits to exceed uh, when we allow our margins to decrease and our load to get heavier, we overload ourselves and we, we begin to hurt ourselves. Uh, God helped us out of that situation. We had to make some intentional decisions and they weren't my preference, but what they've done is they've allowed us to live within our margins and, and, and feel a sense of contentment and security. What areas do you overload your life? And listen to these definitions of overload, activity overload. Do you find yourself moving from one thing to the next thing? Do you find yourself saying, these are all really good things, but I'm so busy. I talked to an individual from our congregation about a week ago, and they shared with me since the shutdown 2020 here, that they've had time with, with some loved ones to have conversations and do activities that they weren't doing before because they were moving from one good thing to the next good thing to the next good thing. And they're having to make some decisions now. When things begin to return to some form of normalcy and we get a choice about our schedule again, am I gonna choose all of those good things again or am I gonna value relationship above all those activities. How about this, choice overload. You turn on the TV and there's a million channels but nothing good to watch, but we find ourselves scrolling and scrolling and scrolling through choice. How about this, uh, uh, you go to a restaurant and the menu is enormous and there's just too many choices and you can't decide, choice overload. How about commitment overload? I already mentioned debt overload. I've, I want, I want, I want, and so I keep charging it and, and overloading myself with something I can't afford. How about this information overload? I read a statistic this last week that today on an average day in the average newspaper, you and I get more information than people 100 to 150 years ago got in their entire lifetime. Can you imagine that? How about this noise overload or fatigue overload? I'll, I'll rest when I die. 
how many of you have said this? If I just had five more minutes or five more hours or another day this week, because we're trying to squeeze too much into our, our limit. Our, our limit is here and our load is here. And that leads to exhaustion, fatigue, and burnout. The question is this, is how do you and I take on the teaching of Jesus to consider the flowers? How, how do we be more like the flowers than the pagans? Um, here it is, as simple as I can put it. Seek first his kingdom and all of the things you need will be added or given to you as well. Stop running Stop running to what you think is the next great thing that will bring you the satisfaction, contentment, control that you're longing for from the old thing that, that you don't want to be defined by anymore. Instead, find yourself in the teaching of Jesus. So how do we define and find margin in our life? Uh, the truth is this, is God has given us limits. The, the flowers of the field teach us that, that they have a day and they have an amount of time. The sun comes up on them just like it does us and it goes down on them just like it does. They have a fixed amount of time that they will live and so do we. And so we have to choose what, what will fill our days and time and what, what is just enough. Friends, the solution is not more. More time, more money, more things. It just isn't. The countercultural teaching of Jesus is that we need to consider the flowers. We need to abide in Jesus and recognize there are limits and that God will provide when we seek first his kingdom. Jesus really gave us three practical um, limits for life to be with him, to abide in him. We say be with Jesus to become like him, to follow his teaching, to organize our life around the time frame and the limits that God has provided for us and to do the things he did, which is to love people, which means to live within the margins of our, our, our lives, our finances, um, our experiences. Because when we live beyond those and we go to overload, we don't have room to be loving and generous and kind. So Jesus' call is to simplify our life around spiritual formation. Listen to this, exhaustion, depression, burnout, superficial spirituality are usually signs that we're living outside of God, our God-given limitations. So how do we practice margins? Let me define it like this, write, write this down. Margins are the disciplined pursuit of less. The disciplined pursuit of less. The Easter formula, surrender to God, walk in obedience, experience life resurrected. The question begins with this, this simple thing. And I wanna give you a practical guide. This is obviously a, a legal pad and it has margins within it. Um, and it has margins in the lines. I think we've lived in a time uh, digitally that there is, um, infinite space. I can just keep on going and going and going, but I want to challenge you to take one piece of legal paper and write down what's most important to you. Write it down in a size that's very legible, very clear, and prioritize that list. And when your page is full, you're out of space. You're out of limits. Anything more than that one page is too much, and so you must begin to limit. So what's truly of most value and most importance and if it ends up you find you're running from something or to something and it's not kingdom first, well, that's just not the way of, of Jesus. And you might be living with a heavenly Disney world mentality after I die somewhere in the sky, but the truth is Jesus has a life for us here and now. So consider your schedule. You have only so much time I know that COVID-19 shutdown has messed up our rhythms and our routines, but schedule your life. When am I gonna have time to abide, to take in the nutrients that God can give me? When, it, when am I going to rest and, and, and just let God provide for me? Uh, when, when am I going to, to spend time in the relationships that are really important? 
I think we have to prioritize those things and put them on our calendar and you can build in space and each day, each day we should build, build in some margin at the beginning and on the sides and at the end so that we protect our lives. I think we do that financially. We budget and we say, I really am going to live within these things. I, I love this statement from John Mark Comer. He says, Jesus will not run you ragged. Jesus will not run you ragged. Pagan worship, running after and from things will run you ragged. This week, I wanna just ask you to do this. Consider, consider the flowers. Consider what God can do. Consider your levels of worry and begin to recognize that God wants us to live within the spiritual practice of margins. And the only person who can put margin in your life is you as you pray and seek the kingdom first. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we just ask that today you would help us to begin to define what's most important and that you would help us to set some new boundaries, limits in our life, to understand that limits are a gift from you and that we're to use our time and our resources, um, our relationships in a way that brings kingdom first honor to you. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen.